Light pollution next on Enviro Close Up. Welcome to Enviro Close Up. I'm Carl Grossman with Susan Harder of the International Dark Sky Association. The subject, the focus, light pollution. Now, what's a light pollution exactly, Susan? Well, light pollution is a term that's used to describe uh, outdoor night lighting, which is excessive, unshielded, uh, misdirected, or unnecessary. And it manifests itself as sky glow overhead um, from light which is directed upward hitting uh, particulate and moisture, causing that sort of glow halo over our cities. Um, and glare from light bulbs where uh, it's unshielded. And also lighting which is left on uh, when it's not needed. So this is uh, what we term as light pollution. And it's been, uh, been trying to be dealt with by the what we call dark sky advocates, because when you direct light where it's needed in the proper amount, there's less sky glow, which means you have a clearer view of the night sky. My understanding is that the International Dark Sky Association started in Tucson, Arizona. It did. 20 years ago, a group of astronomers in fact, if you go to Tucson, you'll see that it's surrounded by mountains. And on those mountains are uh, professional observatories. So the astronomers got together, formed the organization, which now involves many more people than just astronomers. But the astronomers were the canaries in the coal mine. And they formed the International Dark Sky Association because they were losing their night sky. So for 20 years now, Tucson has had outdoor lighting regulations, dark sky lighting regulations, so that they can preserve their beautiful night sky for uh, astronomical observation. It's also more energy efficient. If you go to Tucson, you can see really well, because of the dark sky lighting that they've installed, um, you can also see the stars when you're in downtown Tucson. And the astronomers weren't able to see stars. I mean, they weren't able to gaze through their telescopes too well with all that light. They were losing their night sky, and they've managed to stem the tide of uh, light pollution in Tucson. And uh, they have annual meetings there in Tucson, the International Dark Sky Association. We have a chapter here in New York State, and there are chapters in Europe, in Japan, you know, just there everywhere, Australia. You got into this movement because you were a victim of light pollution. I was. The uh, light pollution is manifested, as I said, with glare, you know, which you can see as bright light sources, uh, but also light trespass, which would be light that's intruding on your private property. So I was lying in bed one night, and I looked up at my ceiling, and it was all lit up. And I thought, what is that? You know, I couldn't sleep. It was disturbing my sleep. And it was my neighbor's floodlights that weren't just shining up her property, they were lighting up my property. So I was lucky, I ran into my neighbor, Deva Sobel, who's written Galileo's Daughter, many people know the book, and Longitude, and she said, like me, why don't you join the International Dark Sky Association? So they have a very good website, darksky.org, it's very thick with information, and some of the information that I learned was that uh, light pollution, of uh, Light at night, um, you know, disturbs your sleep, but it also shuts off your melatonin, which suppress, which is a uh, cancer suppressant. So they have there's an actual direct link between you know light at night and greater cancer growth. Uh, I just attended a conference in New York City on circadian rhythm disruption and cancer. So you know I became very alarmed for my own health. But as I looked more and more into it, you know, there's great implications uh, for uh, misuse of light at night, uh, including impacts on flora and fauna, um, you know, and as I said, human health. So what I did was I went to my own town. You to live in the town of East Hampton. The town of East Hampton on, on Long, Long Island, Island, right? After I investigated, you know, websites to figure out what to do, and I thought, well, maybe there's 
you know, some regulation. And we had one. And, but it wasn't written clearly enough. So I started to investigate uh, lighting regulations. And this has become uh, my, my cause uh, to help uh, municipalities enact sensible lighting codes to, uh, to deal with light pollution. Give some examples of, I mean, outdoor lighting street lamps do have shielding of some sort on them. Uh, give examples of how municipalities can deal with, uh, with light pollution. Well, it's actually quite um, interesting to me that a little bit of education goes a long way with this. And uh, when people start to think about it, many people haven't. And I mean, even the people who install and are responsible for installing lighting, uh, they know a great deal about electricity, but they haven't thought about the consequences of light. So oftentimes municipalities will pick, you know, historic street lights based on what they look like during the day. You know, they pick them out of a picture, but they don't consider what it looks like when it's lit. So when you have a light fixture, as we did on Main Street in East Hampton, which is one of the more beautiful streets in America, uh, they had an un a globe-type fixture with a light bulb in the middle. And this produced a tremendous amount of glare in the line of sight of drivers and pedestrians. Um, and there was an accident. And they attributed the accident to the fact that the, the driver was blinded by all this glare. So I had done some investigation, and I worked with them. We found a light fixture where the bulb was recessed in an opaque cap. And they actually retrofitted all the lights. It was completely paid for in five years. And in the sixth year, they started saving money because they were able to reduce each fixture by 100 watts and have better light on the ground. So uh, municipalities themselves, uh, can investigate because they're responsible for all their roadway lighting. And this is an area where these simple changes make a big difference because you can see better and the pedestrians can be seen better and it's much safer. You waste less energy, no? Plus that conserving energy is crucial because for every hundred watts that we save, that we don't burn dust to dawn, that's a quarter ton of coal that's not burned. And of course, when you burn coal, you end up with more particulate. You know, that's the mercury ends up in our water, uh, poisons our fish. You know, these are things we really need to take and, into consideration. And global warming. Now, a major target of Susan Harden now is the city of New York. I mean, this is the city that never sleeps. The uh, skyline lit up with uh, oh, uh, some people might consider jewels of light. But you don't see it that way exactly, do you? Well, actually, this, you say the city that never Yes, the city sleeps. There are people in the city <laughs> that sleep. And interestingly, uh, New York City, compared to other cities, uh, New York has a great percentage of residential properties and parklands. And New York uh, does suffer in some ways from not having any reviews or regulations uh, so that lighting would be uh, a, uh, reviewed so that they could figure out what it would look like, you know, when it was actually installed. There's many good lighting installations in New York. In fact, the new condo I'm in, they have excellent uh, lighting shielded. It all aims down. It's the correct amount of light. They shut them off when they don't need them. Uh, but you need to have those regulations in place. And I'm not talking about shutting off, you know, the Empire State Building or anything like that, because in a big city, this is part of, you know, what the city is. We have the, the necklace lights on the bridges, which, in fact, they turn those off at 1 o'clock in the morning. I can see the uh, bridges from my apartment, and I think they're quite beautiful. Thank you, Susan Harder. You've been watching Enviro Close Up. I'm Carl Grossman. The, the focus has been on light pollution. And for a copy of this or any Enviro Video program, just visit our website, www.envirovideo.com. Thanks for watching.